Thank you for your continued interest. We're on step six of making a Sterling engine. Today we're going to make the crankshaft. First, we're going to take our eighth inch music wire and we're going to cut it off to the length shown on the pattern. Do that because we can't really easily mark music wire. I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on it. Oops, wrong spot. Right here is where we want to cut actually. I'll make those other marks later once we've cleaned up the shaft a little bit. Alright, so what we're then going to do is going to use a rotary tool and an emery disc to cut that off. Always be careful when picking it up because it could be hot. It's not too bad in this case. but So, what we're then going to do is actually tape off... Well, no, we're going to clean it up first. We'll take it over to uh, the drill press. We'll put it in the drill press. And we're going to clean up the end. And uh, basically lightly sand the whole thing. Right. First, we're going to round the ends a little bit. Just kind of put it up against the stone and spin it. Kind of round the ends off a little bit. Now we're going to actually put the crankshaft right in the drill press. What I have here is some 2,000 grit sandpaper. And I'm basically going to just polish up the rod with it. Don't want to end by going up and down because then the shaft will actually move back and forth in your engine as it spins. So you just want to kind of do a stationary sand at the very the final um, pass. Just finish off one side with doing a little seal steel wool. So again, trying to finish by not moving up and down. So now that we have cut it to the length, polished it up a bit, and you know you certainly can buff it and stuff with a buffing wheel if you like. So typically isn't necessary, but I'm going to put a piece of tape on the whole length of it. Mark off the spots to cut it off. I don't know where we are. Let's go here. Right. Once you get it cut out, it'll be a little like this. I'm going to leave it like this for now and switch gears and uh, work on making, oh, making the uh, pieces that link the crankshaft together. In the past, this, this is a uh, test one, I had made them with counter weights on the end, but the weight had nothing really to do with the actual weight of the piston or anything. It was just really more for looks than anything. So what I decided to do was make a scale that I could evaluate the weight with. So that's what we're going to do. And then I will make the counterweight on the crankshaft based on the actual weight of the piston. So this is the scale. We've got the piston here. So we're going to put that on there. And we've got the connecting piece the shaft. Now there's going to be another piece that I'm not really accounting for in this weight but it's not exactly in a, an exact science either so here but uh, the connecting material is going to be quarter inch oak so I made some small squares I'll put those on here 
two, three, four. So it's coming out to a little less than five of those squares. They happen to be what are they like three uh, three fourths of an inch square or about twenty millimeters. Um, it's a little less than five of them. Since there will be a little more weight than that, I'm going to go with that as a size to calculate the counterweight on the shaft. I'm going to do the same for the displacer. Once again, it's going to weigh a little more than this too. I already have the uh, connecting piece of the crankshaft there. We'll figure out uh, the area that I need for this one. So, right about three squares works it out perf perfectly. So, that's what I'll be using to calculate the counterweight. Here is the resulting plan attached to a quarter inch piece of oak. Um, be sure to attach it so that the grain is running lengthwise with the uh, connecting pieces for the crankshaft. I'm going to drill it out with an 8 inch bit. Okay, here's the uh, connecting pieces with the counterweights drilled out. And we'll go to the scroll saw and cut them out. This is what they are, look like once they're cut out. I usually try to round the sides a little bit when I sand them. If they're going to connect, catch on connecting rods or linkage or anything, that's where it'll be. Um, this is the music wire cleaned up after uh, the cutting. I'm going to just kind of start with the middle, feed them into the pieces. The ones that are slightly shorter are the ones for the displacer. Okay. Once everything is done, we may uh, put some glue in there, but for initial assembly and testing, it'll be fine this way. Uh, on the end piece, I have some uh, small brass spacers I made. So I'll just push that in. And, uh, so with a little effort, you can get your crankshaft assembled. We'll slip it onto the engine here. Got uh, Brass spacer slightly deformed so that uh, it can hold its position when the engine's running. We have another spacer around here somewhere, right here. Go on there to keep it from rubbing on the front. Put our other spacer back out. and smooth. So um, that is the crankshaft. The uh, displacer is always 90 degrees. I usually have it lead. You could have it go the other way and then the engine would spin in the opposite direction. All right. Uh, here we have a quick test run of the new crankshaft. Um, 
it's not actually the correct piston or final connecting rods and linkage and stuff but uh, just wanted to test out the crankshaft with the more accurately balanced counterweights engine seems to be running fine a little noisy a little friction to clean up yet but uh, the balance has come out quite nicely on the crankshaft.